What's up guys, Graham here. I'd start this video off by saying a huge thank you to everybody that made donations this past week. You guys are amazing. I cannot thank you enough for helping to support the channel. And we got a $5 donation from Lanny and a $10 donation from Fletcher. And since we hit the $10 mark on the donations, we are going to be doing a Rex giveaway. So if you'd like to be entered into this giveaway of a Rex, then please leave your character name and server in the comment section below this video. And you will be entered into this giveaway but the rules are simple you have to be subscribed and you have to hit that like button now remember if you're one of the people that use my referral link in the description below my videos in order to make your rift account then i'm going to go ahead and make it to where you're going to win 10 times the amount of rex so if you're the winner of this giveaway you will win 10 rex yourself the winner will be announced in the next weekend video good luck everyone It's that time once again for the state of PvP, this time in March of 2015. There isn't too much that's happened in PvP as far as changes this month, but the couple things that did get changed were a big impact on PvP. To start off with, they increased the drop rate of equipment from Marauder Supply Satches, and that's basically making it to where you have a 1 in 2 chance of getting a PvP drop from the Satches you get from winning a Warfront match. Another thing they did is they fixed the Marauder's Greater Essences to where they're actually the equivalent of other level 65 Greater Essences because before they had basically level 60 procs and all of that so that is a huge change in the right direction we're finally getting to where we're going to be competitive against all the pve geared people and finally they increased the damage of our dream breaker weapons from the pvp satches they increased it by 200 percent so that really gives you a perspective of how nerfed we were all the way up until just recently in pvp whenever you compared our gear versus the pve ears with that being said we have to look back on all the changes that have happened from 3.0 up until now that really puts into perspective how bad it was for us pvpers whenever nightmare tide hit versus how it is now with uh pvp gear versus pve gear comparison of course whenever i'm referring to pvp gear or pve gear i'm referring to the marauder satches that drop the items out of it which are commonly referred to as pvp gear since they're earned through pvp and of course the pve equivalent is the dungeon dropped items because I made such a big fit about it in the early state of PvP videos that I was doing and a lot of people disagreed with how I was seeing the gear problem in the game. They were thinking that I was really taking it out of context, they thought that PvPers didn't have it that bad and well in this video I'll show you the kind of perspective that you should be having as in how bad it was for us all the way from the start of 3.0 up until now. Let's go ahead and look at the things that have changed in that time period. And number one on the list, we're going to go ahead and put greater PvP essences needed to be buffed as they were the power of level 60 essences. Now, that's kind of a given because I just now told you guys about the change because it just happened. Now, all the stats, the procs, everything from these essences that were gained through PvP satches were just terrible. And they were of the level 60 equivalent. So they were so bad that they needed to be brought up to a level 65 level and we were on such a bad playing field compared to the pveers put it that way second on the list is they increased the drop rate of marauder gear from pvp boxes substantially and you'll notice that i use words like that quite often in this list such as substantially greatly all that stuff because they didn't need to make very small changes to how bad it was for us. It was huge changes that they needed to make. And we were on such an unfair playing ground. It was just crazy. And I was pointing that out in my first State of PvP video. And so many people disagreed with me. It blew my mind. And now you're going to see all the changes that they had to do. And how drastic the changes were in order to make us more on the level playing field. So the drop 
rate got increased where it is like a one in two chance so a 50 percent chance in order to get a piece of marauder gear from the pvp boxes whereas in the past it was so much worse i mean it was like a 10 percent or less than that that you would actually get a piece of marauder gear so that made it to where whenever you were trying to gear up your character you were having such a hard time getting the marauder gear that PVEers that were doing all of the weeklies and stuff that they they had access to and us PVPers didn't have any of the conquests weeklies available to us at the early point of Nightmare Tide and they were gearing up so fast and they were in Frostkeeper gear before we would actually get our Marauder gear from the RNG of the boxes. I mean you might get the legs of the Marauder gear from your PvP box only to turn around and get it again and these people are actually getting the marks to buy the Frostkeeper gear way beforehand and that's where I had made my comparison of uh, the early Marauder gear versus the Frostkeeper gear in my first state of PvP video but I was basically saying this is what they have as in the PvEers will already have the Frostkeeper gear once you finally get the gear from Marauders boxes to fill the slot that you're wanting. Third on the list is the removal of three stat equipment from Marauder boxes. Now what that means is that they were actually missing stats on the PvP gear and man it was such a terrible thing because Take for instance, you might get a chess piece or something from the Marauder box and it wouldn't even have any decks on it if you're a warrior or something. So here you only had strength, endurance, and then some kind of primary uh, attack power or crit power or whatever else, but you wouldn't even have any decks to complement it. And that was such a terrible thing that they had to remove all of the three stat equipment from the boxes and make it to where it's actually viable for stat equipment or better. Fourth on the list is so important. They significantly increased the power of Marauder gear. The gear was so terrible that people just would not use it. They were purposely trying to get bolstered gear instead of actually getting the Marauder gear because it was just terrible, the stats and everything that was on Marauder gear. We were at a, such a bad playing field. It was just, I, I, I cannot even express how terrible it was. And people actually had the gall to disagree with me whenever I was talking about it. And the developers finally came around and said, yeah, you got, uh, Grim is right. You know, the other people that are talking the same way are right. We've got to increase the power of this Marauder gear because it is so weak compared to the dungeon gear. Fifth on the list is they reduced the cost of upgrading Marauder gear. Now that's very important because not only was the gear terrible, but if you tried to upgrade it, it just cost way too much to upgrade it. And then you were getting an inferior product at the end than the people that were doing dungeons. It was just such a bad system altogether and I'm glad we're looking back on it instead of still living it. Six on the list is they increased the rewards of PvP weeklies by 300% for Marks of Horror. And also they increased the Void Stones that you get in the PvP weeklies as well. But this kind of goes with the number five on the list in that it just cost way too much to upgrade our Marauder gear. And then our rewards from our weeklies was so low that we just could not compete. We could not upgrade this gear. And then even whenever we finally got enough marks because we wasn't getting enough from our weeklies, we would upgrade the Marauder gear and it was still a lot worse than the dungeon gear. Seventh on the list is they considerably increase the chance for Marauder boxes to drop usable equipment. Now what this means is that they changed around how the stat distribution and everything like that would be on the items that you got from the Marauder boxes. Take for instance that normal PvPers want like crit power, they want uh, maybe attack power, spell power, that kind of stuff, maybe a little bit less of the physical crit. Also, they're not really wanting tank gear too much. Uh, yeah, you do get the 
tanks here and there in PvP, but really it's not something that normal PvPers want. So they changed around the equipment that was dropped out of the satches to more reflect what people wanted. Eighth on the list is Marauder weapons getting their procs increased greatly. Now what that means is that the PvE weapons that you were getting from dungeons were actually procking a lot harder than what the Marauder weapons were. Basically, it was like a tenth of what the PvE weapons were procking. So everybody would go into dungeons just to get a decent weapon so that they could go back to PvP and actually be able to compete. And now it's where Marauder weapons are going to be able to proc a decent hard-hitting ability and it's going to really change the output of your overall damage. Ninth on the list is they basically did the same thing for the essences where Marauder essences got their procs increased greatly as well. And of course they were on the level 60 equivalent in the past and that was a big complaint that the players had is that all of the, the greater essences and all that just were absolutely terrible whenever it came to their proc rates and how hard they were hitting or affecting the overall result of the PvP. Tenth on the list is basically just a generalization because there were a ton of other issues that were claimed to be accidental. So it really wasn't intentional changes that they did. It was just things that went wrong that made it a lot harder on PvPers once they went into PvP if they were not doing PvE as well. And it really resulted in the PvEers coming in with their uh, Inquisitor specs or whatever and able just to steamroll everybody else because not only were there all the problems that you've seen listed previously, but then there was a lot of other things that were accidental that made it really hard on us, put it plainly. But looking back at it all, I realized that a lot of the things I was saying back in December were actually true and that people were starting to see it more and more as time went on. And I even remember back to Daglar making a post on the forum saying that Grim is basically a straight shooter and he respects my opinions, but he thinks I'm off base whenever I'm talking about the gear comparison because you know the raid gear that PvEers were getting was not to be compared to the PvP gear that I was comparing it to. In all actuality, it was supposed to be a timeline comparison and he really thought I was off base with it, only to turn around and make tons of changes that actually were uh, confirming what I had voiced in the past. It's really nice that Tryon is doing so much to change the PvP situations and they're finally starting to see eye to eye with a lot of us and see that the gear problem was such a big issue and they've made tons of changes to really complement what we've been saying. So it, you got to give your appreciation for that if you're still like looking down on them because of the attention that they give to PvP. It's obvious they're trying, you just got to open your eyes and see it. But there's tons of other issues that are still plaguing PvP right now. One is that uh, something that they've acknowledged just recently in that the bolstered equipment is actually better than some of the dream breaker equipment that you get in PVP boxes and upgrade all the way up to its max. And as you can see in this screenshot here, uh, there was a forum user named Kimatsu, I believe that's how you say the name, but basically she said that the rifle there that was the blue item and was going to get bolstered up showed better stats than the Dreambreaker recurve bow that she ended up equipping with a rune on it later. And if you look at the overall stats, because that's where you have to compare the bolstering, you can see that her strength is higher, her dex is higher, everything is higher almost on the bolstered screenshot at the top versus the recurve bow dream breaker item down there on the bottom that is ruined out so it's a problem right there but vlad has already acknowledged that he's looking into it and hopefully he'll get it fixed rather soon another thing that everybody is voicing that they would like to have changed is the pvp consumables now in the past you could get like the warlords insoles and stuff like that and they actually had a movement increase of like 15 percent and stuff like that but now like all the consumables that you can get have like 12 percent movement increase and 
all of the PVP consumables and all that, you have to go to a vendor in order to buy them. And then they're the level 60 equivalent. So they need to be boosted up as well because we are just not having the consumables that we need in PVP right now. And they're too inconvenient to get without putting them in the rift store like everybody else has access to with the PVE items. Finally, the thing that everybody is well aware of but seems not to be getting fixed is the ranged PVP that is going on. Because right now it's just not worth it to play melee PVP. Some people like me actually go out and are brave enough to run the melee specs because I know I can do well as long as I can have good movement but really I'm at a severe disadvantage and whenever you see me do the war fronts where I'm topping kills as a melee spec it's really really hard because the game is not geared to let me be competitive with a melee spec right now and the inquisitors are still way overpowered they're not doing anything about it you have pyro still with great burst but way too much cc they uh the roots and stuff are just way too long and there's just a lot of different things that have uh things that need to be changed put it plainly now one of the things that people have been suggesting is maybe to uh reduce the amount of cc's that ranged classes can use because whenever they're able to cc you you know pretty consistently at range and then also do just as good a damage if not more as the melee specs there's just no reason to run melee and so far Tryon has not done anything to fix that. Uh, with all the complaining that was going on, the changes that Tryon actually did was that they buffed up Marchman, they uh, buffed up Reaver, they've done another buff to Pyromancer. I mean, it's just, you're, you're buffing up all the range classes and not buffing up the ones that are melee specs that everybody is saying needs to be buffed up. So I'm not too sure what they're thinking on that, but we're, I'm kind of wondering how long it's going to take them to even acknowledge that because how long has it been since 3.0 that the melee specs have been really uh, nerfed down into the ground basically. Yeah, they can still do good damage, but they don't have the survivability. Everybody's playing range. There's no reason not to play range right now unless you're just wanting to brave the elements and really try to make it a challenge on yourself. But, you know, just looking at the list here, it's a, uh, you know, I wrote down that Nightmare Tide hit whenever it was uh, October 22nd of 2014. It wasn't until uh, January 7th of the following year that we actually had any of these PVP changes hit. So we were doing with all these negative effects in PVP for two and a half months before they did their first change and actually started uh, acknowledging that we had the short end of the stick. So whenever you come to all the range class problems that's going on right now in PvP, how long has it been already and how long are we going to have to continue to wait? So I hope they uh, watch this video and actually give us the time of day on this because so far they've done a pretty good job of changing things. I just wish they wouldn't have had so much wrong from the get go. Alright guys, I hope you enjoy this state of PvP for March. As usual, my name is Grim, and I'll see you next time.